Today is April 11th, 2024. My name is Heather Fleming, and I am an abstract painter. My background is, and it has definitely influenced my work, growing up in a small town in Alabama. We lived beside a creek surrounded by nature. My mom always kept a garden, and one of my most profound memories was planting and keeping the garden with her. I climbed trees, I looked for crawdads, picked out cloud shapes, all the things kids should be doing. I loved being outside. I knew and I felt that there was more to the world than what I was seeing, not in a geographical sense, but in an unseen sense. What was to be revealed, the secret language of nature, the way the wind blew and the flowers danced, I felt like everything was speaking to each other. The colors and motion of nature are heavy influences of my work today, the vibrancy, the happiness. I still look outside and love the bright green set on the bright blue sky. I feel a sense of grounding and wonder in nature. I still stop and observe butterflies and birds. I love how happy the plants are after it rains, something the garden hose or sprinkler system just cannot deliver. I also remember one of my favorite Christmas gifts as a kid was an art set. It had pastels, pencils, paints, markers, stencils, the works. And I began painting and drawing on everything. And having that early on served as an outlet for self-expression, um, especially throughout my teenage years. Um, my parents also exposed me to many different cultures as a kid. We traveled to India, Egypt, China, and Australia, and being able to experience something so unknown and see the rest of the world sparked a perpetual curiosity and interest in symbolism, the human history and condition, the larger meaning of life. Understanding that there was no singular perception of the world was very impactful. The places we visited were rooted in ancient cultures, and I felt the way I do in nature, that there was something deeper, a knowledge or connection to be discovered. My current work is heavily on the seen world, and my next body of work will be exploring the unseen, more of the felt presence and the unknown. So my biggest influences are Helen Frankenthaler, Hilma of Clint, and William, William de Kooning. Um, I'm not sure my work directly reflects those artists, but I research and look at their work the most. Um, I love Hilma F. Clint's use of the quantum as an abstract artist, and um, she's actually the founder of abstract art. I love Helen's use of color and when she pivoted into color fields. I love that both women were pioneers in style and subject, um, especially during a time when women artists were not heavily embraced. Um, current or modern day artist, I really like um, Ian Ryer Smith. I think um, his work is pure expression. He truly captures motion, depth, and emotion it's entirely abstract and one just gets it they feel it when looking at it currently i am focusing on wrapping up a body of work that is titled seek some of these are commissioned pieces but i began the series um, I was inspired by the ocean and sunsets um, we are constantly seeking as humans, we are seeking beauty, adventure, peace, the ultimate sunrise or sunset. We seek to feel and we look to nature for this. And to me, this goes back to the inherent connection humans have with nature. Two of the paintings, Ocean Forest and the playfully titled Under the Sea, are inspired by, well, what is beneath the sea? We see so many paintings of the surface of the ocean or coast, but I wanted to capture what's beneath. I spent a lot of my childhood in the Florida Keys and being in the ocean and observing the coral reef is really remarkable. 
the colors and being under the water and feeling the ebb and flow of the ocean, not just floating on the surface of it, but being underneath it, moving with it, um, is very inspirational. Also, there's an explosive sunset in um, this body of work, and which in South Florida, the sunsets are just very explosive. They're so immersive um, and just vibrant. And so when I'm finishing this series um, with some additional pieces of nature and symbolism, and I'm also researching and planning for what is next. And so the biggest challenge of being an artist is definitely sales. While my paintings do sell, it's a slow process and um, not a steady stream of income. It's like there's a boom and then nothing. And production also takes time. Um, I have a family with small children. And so balancing production with everyday life and then weaving in sales, um, it can be very challenging at times. One really needs a wide audience to sell art because most people buy decorative art to match their drapes and furniture and finding um, collectors is a little bit of a challenge. I definitely produce a few decorative art series um, to kind of enter into the decorative art market. Um, I'm not really in a position to do art fairs, so getting my work out to the world is tough. And the advice I would give my younger self is not to follow the conventions of life. Don't go through the expected motions. Don't just do what you're told. Explore, travel, be curious, experience, and create. Find a temporary job to pay the bills while you find out who you are and what you want to do. Don't pursue the path that's safe and going to land you that nine to five if that's not what you want in life. Truly meditate and find clarity on what you want out of life before committing to a singular path. Um, throughout my work, I have tried unconventional mediums and have a lot of fun with them. Um, I let nature help me out sometimes. If I want a more fluid sense in a painting, I will dilute the paint with water, pour it, and then um, obviously being outside will let the wind manipulate um, manipulate the paint. I have used grass for texture, the sun for hardening and quick drying, and I'm about to pivot back to using earth pigments and natural paints once I complete Seek and kind of use up my stock of paints that I have. Um, I used to use earth pigments a lot, and I'm not really sure why I stopped. Um, maybe it was just easier to purchase and source other paints. I've also... Um, I've been commissioned to do a very large eight panel um, painting. So each panel is 72 inches by 60 inches and there's eight of them that will make up one large composition. So currently I'm using a projector to project a grid onto the eight panels individually. So when I paint them, I can um, line up the marks. Um, I really only have room to lay two panels side by side at a time. So that's um, been a very interesting process. There are one of several things that I listen to while I paint. I rarely listen to mainstream music as I do when I'm driving or having a good time. I feel like music influences me too much. It changes my mood. I do listen to either audiobooks. I'm really into the Sarah J. Mass, um, Jennifer Armentrout, and Rebecca Yaros series. Or I listen to brainwave meditation frequencies or Tibetan singing bowls. I also listen to choir nuns and or monks, such as the Benedictine nuns. And I'm currently listening to The Bible in a Year by Father Mike Schmitz. I feel like when I listen to mainstream music, my consciousness is in total beta mode and at the forefront of, um, of my mind which is not where I want to be when I paint. I want my subconscious to be the leader 
when I'm creative. So when I listen to audiobooks, my awareness is focused on the story and on the book, on the narrative. So I paint more intuitively and I let my subconscious do the work. And the same goes for frequencies, the singing bowls, and the choir music. It's very ethereal, and it alters my brain in a way that I feel more relaxed, um, way more in an alpha or theta state. And so I hope people take away from my work a sense of wonder, of deeper thought, to look beyond what's in front of them, to seek the magic of nature and how we are connected to it, Um, to think about what is beyond the sunset, what are the cosmos telling us, God designed them to communicate with us after all. And I want people to look at my work and feel Thank you for listening.